For those who've never heard about Buck Market, can you, in a nutshell, tell um, a few words about the company? What is it that you do? We are a global online marketplace. We specialize in uh, selling refurbished electronic devices. We are present in more than 10 countries in Europe, but also in the US, in Japan, in Korea, in Australia. Well, just by the description, I'm already overwhelmed thinking about the scale of operations and, you know, all of the processes that really go into making the business possible. According to me, the main pillars to succeed, uh, the first one is that we need a great quality upstream. So from sellers, from refurbishers, we need the best quality and we need a great customer support downstream. How do you make them stay with back market? Because like they could sell it on their own, right? Like they could find different marketplaces maybe. We offer different uh, type of services at back market to, to make the life of seller uh, as easy uh, as possible. Maybe maybe three types of services. I think there are primary uh, services, you know, that any seller can expect from us to handle their day-to-day -day activities on back market, like uh, uploading their catalog, managing their stock, their pricing, their orders, getting their invoice, and so on. I love how you started smiling more talking about packaging. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I love this topic. As a marketplace, we must ensure uh, we have such a great unboxing experience for uh, our customers, regardless of the seller they purchase from. Even for us, when we work with other platforms like yours, often this is one of the biggest bottlenecks, not the technology, not really like developing the right packaging, but actually convincing your sellers to use it. So tell us a little bit about that. And last year we managed to ensure 50% of smartphone devices are shipped to customers with a branded back market packaging. So from zero to 50% in 80 months. Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of the Packaging Perspective. Today we'll be chatting about very exciting industry, refurbished electronic devices. In today's world, where technology is um, evolving rapidly, the e-waste is one of the fastest growing sources of solid waste in the world. And that is why refurbished electronics market emerges as a vital player providing alternatives to the cult of new. But the success of refurbished electronic devices market is not just due to the tangible products that end up in the hands of customers. In fact, there are a lot of operations, processes, and know-how that happens behind the scenes. And that is exactly the topic that we will be focusing on today with uh, our today's guest. In today's episode, we will be chatting with Vivien Pongin, head of After Sales Operations at Back Market, who will share with us a bit of more of what happens behind the scenes in one of the most recognized global marketplace for refurbished devices. Hi, Hi Vivian. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Bonjour. <laughs> for those who've never heard about Back Market, can you, in a nutshell, tell um, a few words about the company? What is it that you do? Yeah, for, for sure. So uh, Back Market, we are a mission-driven company established to fight e-waste by giving tech devices a second life. That's our, our core mission. So we are a global online marketplace. We specialize in uh, selling refurbished electronic devices. We are present in more than 10 countries in Europe, but also in the US, in Japan, in Korea, in Australia. So we offer a platform for certified professionals to sell high quality, renewed products to consumers looking for more affordable, you know, and more sustainable alternatives to buying new. We sell any type of electronic devices, you know, such as smartphones, laptops, tablets, but also uh, a vacuum cleaner, uh, oven, fridge, and lots of other things, more and more. And on the other side, on customer, you know, we also offer a platform for them to trading their old tech directly on back market. 
and to get cash out of it. Well, just by the description, I'm already overwhelmed thinking about the scale of operations and, you know, all of the processes that really go into making the business possible. What's your role in all of that? Uh, so um, on my side, I've been in the back market for about uh, three years now, and I'm in charge of uh, uh, after sales operations. So uh, to, to summarize it, on one side, my team and I, we make sure we provide a top-notch after sales experience for our our customers, whenever they need support with their purchase or their device. And on the other side, we ensure that we put sellers, refurbishers, in the best conditions to offer fast and relevant support to customers and to back market whenever we need them. All right. And I feel like we need to give a little bit more of a context on why we're talking. So if you could tell also... Um, about our collaboration between Back Market and Pack Help and how it started and what we did together very shortly because we will circle back to this later on. Yes, for sure. Our partnership started about three years ago when at that time at Back Market, uh, we were looking at uh, kicking off new uh, professional services to uh, make the life of sellers, refurbishers easier on Back Market than other platforms. And so uh, we identify a bunch of services we decided to test and uh, to scale eventually. One of them was about providing robust and uh, eco-friendly smartphone packaging to sellers. So we look for a packaging partner with a similar uh, startup uh, DNA than us, I would say, uh, being flexible, you know, with the ability to uh, quickly iterate on our packaging offer and uh, who is at the same time uh, pleasant to work with. So that's how we ended up working together. For those of you who are watching us, uh, stay for more about uh, our collaboration, um, all the details about it and actually how it helped Buck Market um, to achieve a couple of business um, goals and uh, how it helped them optimize and streamline their operations. Now, what are the key operational components involved in the launch of a refurbished device to market? What are the steps and scope of work that you need to prepare and overlook? I think uh, there are many uh, very important components, uh, to be honest, uh, on the operation side for, for the refurbished industry. Uh, but I would like to... Uh, to mention two of them, okay, that are, uh, according to me, the main pillars to succeed. Uh, the first one is that we need a great quality upstream, so from sellers, from refurbishers, we need the best quality, and we need a great customer support downstream. All right, so that's two uh, main pillars. And if I go uh, a bit more into details for each of them, so seller quality is a cornerstone between uh, customer care and seller success. Team, you know, seller quality, we have the mandate to ensure that our 1,500 sellers give customers no more factual reason to buy new. So to do so, as a company, we need to ensure that customers, they receive items that are the same functionality as new products during the full warranty period, all right? And that customers get the same level of service from the delivery to replacement of their devices as from any bested class retailer. Saying that from a seller perspective or refurbisher perspective, it means we uh, will favor and reward best quality sellers and also support sellers to elevate their quality standards and operations. All right. So great quality upstream and great customer support downstream because quality alone is not enough. And we all know that to achieve our mission of steering, you know, customers away from new to refurbish instead. We need also to offer customers a uniform and consistent after sales experience that they can fully trust at any time of their purchase. And that's in this context that we decided to launch a service called CCBM, so Customer Care by Back Market 18 months ago, to handle ourselves 100% of customer service requests. So for customers, you know, it was a big change. It ensures them to have a top-notch customer service experience all along the customer journey, 
regardless of the sellers they purchase from and the market they buy in. And for sellers, a big change as well because it allows them to get rid of the after sales management uh, burden so that they can really focus on their core function, which is sourcing and refurbishing quality products. Let's dig a little bit deeper, uh, if we may, into um, those both components that you mentioned. So I actually um, logged into your seller's portal yesterday and I was going through a lot of great materials that you're sharing online. And one of the things that I found is, for example, that you have your own um, lab, if I may, uh, a team that does mystery shopping, for example, but also develops different technologies or procedures that you later on share with your um, refurbishers and sellers. Can you tell a little bit more about that? Yeah, for sure. So we, we have a dedicated quality team at Back Market, you know. Uh, they have actually uh, two missions that I, I briefly mentioned. One is about the quality control, so favoring and rewarding high quality sellers. Yes. So I would say it's about, you know, I would say measuring and monitoring three uh, key mechanisms you know, to improve uh, the seller quality performance. So the first one is that we have a quality charter at Back Market. So we need to ensure the sellers comply with our quality charter and our standard requirements when they sell product on Back Market. Second, we have an algorithm that gives sales to uh, sellers based on their quality uh, performance, so quality metrics. And three, we have quality processes, you know, that help us to spot sellers who are underperforming in terms of quality. So quality control, and then, as you mentioned, we have a lab, so what we call quality uh, enablement, you know, where we support sellers, you know, to elevate, to improve their quality standards and operations. So it's a, a sub-team in the quality team so that work with the lab at back market, the logistic team and the tech team to support sellers in improving their quality. In particular, we build, uh, design, roll out tools, you know, solutions to empower sellers to improve their quality. But we also lead quality uh, a battleground, so we go on site, we visit sellers, we visit their operations to not to be the policeman, but to provide some guidance, to share best practices, and to make sure all this market grow together to improve the quality of refurbished devices. All right. And for the the other component that you mentioned, so the uh, the customer experience, can you tell us what was the starting point? Because you introduced that um, service not so long ago, I would say. So why did you decide to do so? And yeah, what was the starting point? I'm actually kind of curious how it was before. <laughs> it started uh, 18 months ago uh, with a very uh, same uh, approach. We don't want to give any reason for customers to buy from to buy new. So we need to ensure a consistent and uniform after sales experience, regardless of the sellers you buy from. Okay. There was really a gap of experience. Sometimes uh, some sellers not refunding the customers on time, not properly answering to the customers, delaying their answer for some reasons, and so on. So you know, it, it takes so much effort as a marketplace, as a brand, to bring customer in, to convince them to switch their yeah. mindset from new to refurbish, that we can't afford to disappoint them if they have any issue uh, with their device, you know. So that's how we, we started this, this new service, because there was clearly a gap in terms of quality charter application, in terms of after sales experience when the customers was in back market hands on the seller hands. So we did not want to compromise on this. So we decided to take over the full after sales experience for customers at back market. So we launched these services to uh, handle directly with our own agents, 100% uh, of the customer requests. So yeah, marketplaces are very interesting um, business model for me because you need to constantly look on both sides your um, like supplier partner seller 
and your end customer. And it's, um, I think it's very good that you mentioned one component from each of the words so that, uh, you know, we can grasp like what what is the thing that you were focusing on for both groups. But um, going back to sellers a little bit, I want to understand a little bit more um, who are they? Because honestly, when I first came into your website, I was like, okay, but like, where are they getting those devices from? Like individual customers who can sell their devices to you, that's something I can relate to. Like I Mm -hmm. could sell my own phone to back market, but uh, what are the business sellers you're working with? Could you paint us a picture of who are those companies and maybe where you find them? First, it's it's important to to to, to remind that the collaboration with sellers and refurbishers started ten years ago when we launched Back Market and has grown and evolved over the, the, the last ten years. You know, now we have more than thousand five hundred sellers helping us daily to achieve our mission globally. Uh, sellers are very diverse. You know, it goes from very large and global corporations who have been in the refurbish industry for many years to small refurbishers who are growing with us, you know, year after year. So a great diversity of sellers. I think it will be very difficult for me to sketch a profile of a, a typical seller at back market. But um, to uh, oversimplify it, I would say there are two main types of, of sellers with different level of uh, expertise, of course, but uh, there are sellers, you know, who source and refurbish devices on their own. They send, they sell them on back market. So they are refurbishers, professional refurbishers, experts uh, in terms of uh, the refurbish industry. And we have sellers who source devices already refurbished and ready to sell on back market. All right. So they are more on the trader and broker profile. So with those um, sellers and uh, giving examples of the two types, um, how do you work with them? Meaning, how do you make them stay with back market? Because like they could sell it on their own, right? Like they could find different marketplaces maybe to uh, sell their devices they could like sell their in physical shops but for some reason they decide to work with back market so if you could tell a little bit about yeah what what makes them come to you and then stay yes yeah, great question i think uh, uh first of all you know if we want to succeed we need to make sure it's easy for sellers to sell in back market that's a very uh, uh, basic uh, principle. So uh, saying that, uh, I think we, we offer a different uh, type of services at back market to, to make the life of seller uh, as easy uh, as possible. Maybe, maybe three types of services. I think there are primary uh, services you know, that any seller can expect from us to handle their day-to-day activities on back market, like... Uh, uploading their catalog, managing their stock, their pricing, their orders, getting their invoice, and so on. So we have a dedicated team working hard to make those basics as efficient as possible for sellers. And then, you know, we have uh, what we can call subscription paid services. So seller can subscribe to in order to get help with some aspect of their business. For instance, uh, logistic service, you know, when they don't want to handle delivery to customers or when they need to get a shipping provider for uh, international orders, we offer repair services when they do not have the capacity to handle specific repair cases or some repair flow in some markets, for instance. We also offer some financial services if they need to get more frequent payments to better manage their cash flow and so on. So that's services we have built based on listening to our sellers, based on their needs, their problems, their blockers. We try to uh, move from the pain points to uh, improving our services to match with their needs. And last but not least, as I mentioned uh, a bit earlier, there are services that are part of our terms and conditions. You know, So when you 
decide to sell on back market, you, uh, by, you as a seller, by default, you are uh, part of the services. That's a case of customer care by back market, which encompass three major benefits for sellers. We handle 100% of the customer requests on their behalf. Uh, we take care of providing uh, return labels to customers whenever needed. And we grant them access to a platform to order their packaging. What do you do exactly with the packaging? I logged in yesterday into your uh, back office platform because this is how you call the platform for uh, your sellers, right? Yeah, correct. Exactly. Yeah. So I logged in there. It's very nicely done. It's not like, you know, sometimes you have the client facing interface and it's all nice and polished. And then like if you go uh, to the other side of the platform, log in as a seller or provider or whatever, then it's all very old school. It wasn't like that at all. So I really actually enjoyed the experience and <laughs> and the onboarding. And yeah, there were um, multiple um, services that I seen there that I could use as a as a potential seller. And one of them being packaging. So yeah, tell us more about it and why you decided to launch packaging and what are the benefits it brought to back market. About packaging services, you know, it's a, it's a service we uh, uh, we decided to start uh, three years ago uh, with Packhelp, uh, and, and actually the value is both for sellers and, and, and for end customers. You know, so uh, for sellers, we don't want them to care about sourcing quality packaging because we will do it on their behalf, so they can benefit from our expertise. And of course, of kind of economy of scales and, and competitive pricing. So that's really uh, uh, the value proposition for them. And for customers, I think we have to remember that uh, we are on a market, you know, where we are competing with new devices. Whereas the unboxing experience from those global brands, it's, it's uniform and creates some kind of wow effect, you know, when you receive your new uh, latest uh, Apple, it's already, always uh, in a nice box. Uh, everything is beautiful and clean. So as a marketplace, we must ensure uh, we have such a great unboxing experience for uh, our customers, uh, regardless of the sellers they purchase from. You know, uh, you don't want to receive a reborn device, a refurbished device in a very old, and ugly and second-hand packaging. You know? uh, we want to make sure our customers, when they receive the rebound tech, the, the device that has been put back to new conditions, they have the same wow effect than uh, customers when they buy new. All right? So we want parity in terms of unboxing experience between new and uh, refurbished. That's why, since it wasn't, the case, and there was a great diversity of packaging used by our sellers, we decided to set up this business to take care of the sourcing, uh, the quality check, uh, and the order management on their behalf, so that they can really, they can really benefit from our expertise, you know, and, uh, and just uh, trust that uh, we have the best packaging for our consumers. You know. I believe you do. And by the way, I love how you started smiling more talking about yeah, packaging. I, mean, I, I love this topic. You know, it's a, <laughs> it's, it's a great story uh, for the last uh, two or three years. Uh, we have started from uh, an ID and now uh, we have uh, achieved great results uh, all together. So uh, it's great to see, you know, uh, customers putting pictures of their back market packaging uh, on social media you know it's like uh, it means it's been something for us it's like uh, we have we have achieved you know something what we wanted to achieve so customers are prone you know they are they are sharing their box their back market branded box because it's nice it's also you know match with their their values for for some of them you know it's it's 100 percent in recycled carton there is no plastic uh, so uh, i think uh, yeah, we are really uh, uh, achieving something on, on this side, and uh, and that's why I'm, I'm very proud of what we have been doing with uh, with the team and with Packhelp uh, over the last two years. I think sometimes it's easier said than done. Like launch a new um, 
service to your uh, sellers. And even for us, when we work with other platforms like yours, often this is one of the biggest bottlenecks, not the technology, not really like developing the right packaging, but actually convincing your sellers to use it. So tell us a little bit about that. How do you actually introduce the service to your sellers? And how did you, I don't know if convince is a good word, but how did you make them use it? Because actually your adoption rate for the um, for the packaging uh, sold by Pack Market, that has also significantly improved. So I assume you've done something right. We interviewed uh, a lot of, of sellers, you know, to really understand uh, what they were expecting uh, if we were going to provide packaging for them. You know, and uh, we uh, listed all the pain points, the frictions, uh, the issues they had with sourcing, with the order management, with the quality, with the price, with the number of components, uh, with the seasonality. Sometimes it's harder for them to source packaging at the end of the year, you know, for the peak season. So we, we knew that to be, to be successful, we needed to tick all those uh, pain points and provide solutions to solve them. So that's what we tried to achieve over the last uh, two years. So last year specifically, I think we worked together uh, between packet and back market to move 100%, you know, of our packaging under management flows into an online platform. So which, which made the ordering process very simple, very fast, and very reliable for both sellers and packet. And this change, you know, uh, was a great success. Uh, I think it has allowed to deliver more than 1 million boxes and fully uh, automated workflow last year to 80 countries and, and 450 locations. So big uh, achievements. From your experience of implementing that service together with PackHelp, what, do you have any roadblocks that you remember solving? And could you tell a little bit about, you know, some of the unexpected things that you encountered while trying to implement this and how you tackled them? Last year, we had only one uh, error, you know, I would say a major one, but kind of a funny one, actually. It's a, it's a good anecdote because uh, we had a, we made a mistake in a in, in manual mistake or human mistake, I would say, when the, one day we were stepping in something that was automated to change a, a setup, an order of setup. And actually, um, we made a mistake in the, in the delivery address. So we provided you uh, the address of a wrong seller to deliver the packaging. So a very little sellers, you know, with a very little shop in the north of France, who is uh, active on back market, received a uh, morning nine pallets of packaging in front of his little shop. So he was very surprised about uh, what is that? Uh, I know I can order back market packaging. I do, but I never heard of this uh, nine pallets. Uh, so of course we are. Uh, we uh, managed to uh, take the pallet back and to solve the issue and sell it to, to, the, to the customer. But uh, what I wanted to say is that uh, as we scale our operation again this year, uh, we want to really uh, get rid of all. Uh, Wrapping up the topic about um, packaging and the collaboration between Back Market and Pack Help, uh, what were the business results or business objectives that you have achieved that you are mostly proud of. In other words, if you would be reporting about this project, what would you put as, you know, success slide? The first thing we could highlight is that uh, within uh, 18 months, so we started working together three years ago, but we were starting to accelerate, I would say 18 months ago. And last year we managed to uh, ensure 50% uh, of smartphone devices are uh, shipped to customers with a branded back market packaging. So from zero to 50% in 18 months, it's a, it's a great achievement. 
And now we are working together from the 50 to 100 percent. So uh, we have uh, other uh, challenges and, and, and set up endpoints to suck to get there. So that will be the, the main thing, you know, from zero to 50 percent in 18 months. Uh, that's a great thing. And on, on the more, uh, I would say, rational part, uh, we also ensure uh, that the, the devices are protected from the seller to the customer, but also from the seller back to from the from the seller to the customer, but also from the customer back to the seller. And third thing is about uh, brand awareness, you know, because we have beautiful uh, branded packaging, so people they are very uh, proud of it. We see a lot of our uh, packaging uh, pictured on social media, uh, on the uh, on the reviews as well, and so on. So uh, that would be the three main things uh, I would uh, highlight as a, as a success. Yeah. Okay. Um... I am also a little bit curious, uh, and again, I love that you're smiling more when you're talking about packaging. <laughs> uh, but I'm uh, I'm curious whether you know a unified packaging, because at the end of the day, this is what you're achieving with this solution. You have unified packaging. Does it lead to less logistical errors, or does it allow you to be? faster with your operations for example the time to fault is i know kpi very important for a lot of companies like you might have a beautiful packaging but if it takes i don't know like four minutes to fold it then you know it costs way more than yeah, you think sure. it costs sure. so um uh, yeah tell me a little bit about the link between unified packaging and operations and what are you achieving yeah, with it? it's part of uh, of our seller requirements you know at the very beginning of this of this project so we also uh, came to pack help with a list of uh, requirements i would say uh, seller requirements what they don't want to leave with the packaging what they want to have for instance uh, sellers don't want to have several components to handle. They prefer to have only one. We had a benchmark yeah. of sellers usually don't want to spend more than 10 seconds to fold the case. Usually it's even less than five. So of course, as you said, if you come with a box that is beautiful, very nice, brandy and so on, but it takes 30 seconds to fold, uh, it's not uh, optimized. You know, we, have to, we are, we are in, in, in an industry also where you have large corporations that are doing a huge volume of sales on back market and that are very optimized operations. So you, we need to be very smart in the way we build uh, uh, services. So we need to make sure it's only better than what they have. You know? So we had, that's why we started only 18 months ago because the first 18 months, it was a lot of back and forth aligning on the quality, making sure our packaging is better than, or at least the same quality as the one from sellers. The folding time is super optimized. It's not 15 seconds anymore. It's six to eight seconds now. Uh, it's only one single component. So they don't have to source two, three different components uh, and to manage inventory in stock for two or three different components. So, you know, it's how we are, we are, we manage to, to achieve this uh, uh, together. So really coming with uh, a list of requirements and uh, internally at back market, we have also a person in my team who is uh, uh, expert in, in terms of packaging, design, quality, and with a lot of experiences. So she has been uh, able to work closely with uh, the pack up team, uh, design team and production team to ensure that our requirements are, are considered and that we, uh, Managed to land on the on the on the dreamed uh, packaging for sellers with a beautiful branded design uh, that uh, please customers. And last thing, do you see any positive impact on um, logistic errors? Meaning you have less compliance about uh, damaged devices in delivery or things like that. What we know is that with the packaging we have built for with Packhelp. The, the device cannot be damaged unless you really uh, throw it from 20th floor of your hotel. And even I'm not even sure, you know, that uh, the, 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 the device will be broken. Did you make the crash test? Did you actually, you know, smash? Yeah, of course, for sure. Yeah. But, you know, even, even better, <laughs> it's like 
we have a, a forum uh, where we invite sellers to come when we have presented the, the smartphone packaging and we have a video where sellers throw their own phone with a backpack from the third or fourth floor of backpack building in Bordeaux and go down, open the box, find their phone, no impact, no damage, and say, okay, I will, I will, I will take this packaging. Yeah, so. Of course, we have uh, we have we have made. Uh, okay, please the please share this video yeah, with us. <laughs> oh my god, love it. Um, okay, now moving to um, last bit of our conversation, which I think is also something we share mutually as companies, is our focus on sustainability. Your mission and your business model is strongly rooted with sustainability and circularity. Uh, you also mentioned that um, the packaging we've made together is made of recycled materials. So tell us, uh, tell us more. I want to know more. How, as a leader in the refurbished industry, how do you empower silk circularity in the tech industry so uh, at back market i think uh, uh, we, we put our circularity in the tech industry you know by uh, by creating a very comprehensive ecosystem for the entire uh, life cycle of electronic devices so it includes buying refurbished products but also selling recycling or donating your old tech so we aim to make trading in devices a reflex for consumers when buying new ones and to become the go-to destination for parting with uh, unused electronic devices. So uh, to get there, we are connecting as a company with two key actors in the circular economy. Of course, refurbishers and sellers, as I mentioned already, but also recyclers and repairers. And we uh, focus on connecting the customer journey across the web, the app interface to close the loop between buying and selling, recycling, donating, repairing your electronic devices. So that's how we power circularity in the tech industry, really making sure we are the go-to destination for customers when they want to buy, sell, recycle, or donate their old tech. And I want to touch upon um, operations and link back to sustainability, because I know there are a lot of initiatives that you undertake as a company, like uh, monitoring your carbon emission being one of them. You're also uh, B Corp certified. So that means you need to actually look at your operations and monitor it um, using different sustainability metrics. So, yeah, tell us about a few initiatives that you're mostly proud of within operations and yeah, how does it help you to actually be more sustainable company and lower your emissions? To make it simple, the Carbon Panel project, it involves, you know, to set up targets and defining carbon budgets for each business lines for the next three years, which give operations at back market a clear goal to work toward in terms of carbon efficiency. Then we have built, or we are building constantly operational action plans with our teams, but also our suppliers, our partners to reach uh, those targets. So it's a, it's, a, it's a collaborative approach, you know, between uh, uh, operations uh, and, uh, and sellers and partners. And then we monitor and, and, and have a governance in place. So we have a structure to govern and monitor the the decarbonization strategy, uh, you know, as part of the plan. So we track our progress. Uh, we look at the data, the impact of our projects. So we are able to make some uh, uh, informed decisions, I would say, to uh, uh, further reduce our carbon emission in operations. And then, last but not least, uh, we have a carbon efficiency uh, KPI. I know you like uh, success metrics. So... We have a carbon penil uh, indicator, which measures the ratio of CO2 emissions avoided per CO2 emissions emitted by back market operations. So that's uh, our North Star KPI, you know, that we use that helps our operations to really focus, you know, on reducing emissions per product sold and uh, encourages the adoption of more carbon efficient uh, practices. 
Okay. And I think that's a very good wrap to our conversation because, yeah, for, you, you mentioned a lot of valuable things. Like first, you need to actually measure the things that you want to improve. And then you set up the things that you want to focus on. You pick your battles. And I think that's an over I think that's an overarching theme from what I'm seeing. Uh, because this really um reflects to also the project we've done together and how you approach it. We like you put uh some initial assumptions and then you smartly chosen points that you want to focus on and then you started scaling it so it's an ongoing theme just as uh or i would already say an ongoing project yeah for sure just as it is with becoming more sustainable company like you don't become sustainable company overnight and you don't achieve uh packaging excellency uh and operational excellency overnight and especially with um companies like startups or um even startups with global reach this is where another layer of complexity is added so thank you so much vivian for uh, a lot of uh, a lot of good insights thank you too thank you uh magda for having me today i'm very pleased to spend some time with you to talk about this i hope you got some insight you learned a bit about uh the scene at black market i did i actually did a lot